Nathan. Round of applause for Nathan. Set, set, set. RB, RB. <laughs> so, water polo is is uh, often an un overlooked sport that require that's an aquatic sport that requires physical as well as mental strength uh, while being able to cooperate with the team. <clears throat> um, my my credibility comes from being a three-year water polo player. First year JV MVP, second year varsity most improved, second year uh, varsity qualified for CIF, and third year uh, second best player award. <clears throat> so, hopefully, gaining a better understanding of water polo will uh, provide a new insight and a better perspective for the sport. My main points that I will be talking about are the history of water polo the rules of water polo, and the physical turmoil that uh, average, the average water polo player risks every day while playing the sport. <clears throat> so, the history. According to teamunify.com by the USA water polo officials, uh, they state that in the 19th century, William Wilson, right here, <coughs> It was a famous swimming coach, and he invented uh, the game, which was known at the time as aquatic football. And the ancient, this ancient variant of water polo was first played in the bank, banks of a river in Scotland. And finally, in 1885, the Swimming Association of Great, Bit, Great, Great Britain made the game official and called it water polo. And although, the, although there have been many changes throughout history that adapted to the needs and wants of, and the appeal of water polo, um, we, it is still very important to know and appreciate where the sport came from. Some famous people that have played the sport are Sean Paul, Prince William, Gerard Blitz, and Steve Smith. So now that I've talked about history of water polo, I will move on to talk about the rules. So first off, in water polo, there are two teams. All the, these two teams are divided by wearing different cap colors, darker or bright colors. And uh, so two teams, and there are seven players on the field. Uh, there are posi many positions. For example, there's set, which I screamed in the beginning. Set is basically the center in basketball, the guy who's in the middle of the whole field. There's point, the guy who distributes the ball and makes the plays. And then there's flat and wing, people that are on the side that interchange back and forth from time to time. <clears throat> and uh, basically, all you need to play a sport is a ball, a cap, a speedo, goal, and a pool. Oh, also, the, the last position I didn't talk about was goalie. Goalie is the person who basically blocks the balls from coming in the goal. And the objective of the game is to score more goals than the other team by doing so, basically throwing the ball into the other goal more than the other team. <clears throat> and what most people think when I ask them about water polo, that they don't have no idea what it is. They often think that water polo is basically just swimming with a ball. And this statement is very false. Um, uh, swimming, swimming is a huge aspect of the game, but not only, do you not, not only do you need to know how to swim, you also need to know how to tread water, wrestle with another, Wrestle with, an, wrestle with your opponent, and being, and you'll also have to be able to handle a ball while being able to cooperate with the team and react against the other team. And the mental aspect of the game is that you need to have solid teamwork, communication, trust, playmaking skills, hustle, and heart. <clears throat> So now that I've talked about the rules, I will now talk about the injuries that occur and that we risk every day. 
while checking this board. So, the number one unspoken rule of the game is whatever the refs don't see isn't legal. Did I say that right? Whatever the refs don't see, right? Up. Hold on, sorry. Whatever the refs don't see isn't illegal. Okay, yeah, I did. Sorry. And then, so basically, um, we take, there are many safety precautions that we take. For example, we wear double layered Speedos to protect the area down there, and a water polo cap with protective ear, ear stuff right here, and to prevent, to prevent head trauma to the body. And, uh, and last, the referees before the games, we check, they check the nails to make sure that the nails are uh, safe to play with so that people don't scratch each other, basically. And despite these safety precautions, there are still, it is still common to have these injuries. For example, there are many cases where there are lacerations to the body. There, there have been reports of many head concussions and definitely many kicks down below. So, um, also, one historic event that, that, um, that uh, people still know and acknowledge every day is that the Soviet Union versus Hungary in According to bbc.com slash news article called Blood in the Water by Christy Reed in 1956, the Olympic Games versus Soviet Union Hungary, is, um, four weeks prior to, the, to this game, 200,000 Soviet Union troops invaded Hungary in an effort to suppress anti-communism from taking over. And obviously the game was personal. So in the end, the game was too bloody for the match to continue and it was cut short. Hungary um, won, eventually won the game 4-0. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, given that you have a better understanding for water polo, hopefully your perspective has changed. Uh, my main points are I've talked about, the, I've talked about the history, the rules, and the injuries that can occur. Clinch, oh sorry. Uh, in conclusion, if there's one thing that you should take from this, it would be that a perfect water polo player can be described as having the overarm accuracy of a volleyball player, the endurance of a cross-country skier, and the strategy of a chess player. Of course, finding a player of this ability is difficult.